AWS is growing at an insane rate and if you're not learning it the right way, you're wasting your time. Amazon is investing $8 billion alone in the UK, which is going to be creating 14,000 jobs over the next five years. Companies need cloud engineers and AWS has the potential to get you into a six-figure salary. But most beginners fail because they actually get lost in the 200 plus services that AWS provide and they don't know what ones to learn. By the end of this video, I want you to have a step-by-step -step guide on mastering AWS without spending time on unnecessary services that you're probably never going to use. And I'll show you the ones that matter and the ones that you can learn fast. So stick around because I'm also going to reveal one mistake that a lot of people make which keeps them stuck. Cool, so if you're trying to break into tech, learning AWS the wrong way is obviously gonna cost you time, money, and job offers. And we need to remember that right now, AWS actually powers 90% of Fortune 500 companies and it dominates the cloud market. Your competition is getting certified, building hands-on projects, and landing high-paying roles. While you're still wondering, where do I start? How do I even do this? Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm Tech Toby, and over the past 10 years I've worked in tech most recently as a senior cloud engineer. I've progressed from entry level in the junior areas of cloud all the way up to senior. I've helped hundreds of people break into tech and today I'm gonna to show you exactly how I would learn AWS from scratch. So if you want a proven roadmap that's gonna actually help you get hired, keep watching. Now the first thing to get over is the learning trap and the services that actually matter. So you don't really need to learn everything. We know there are over 200 services, but in your day-to-day -day job and most companies, reality is you probably, I would struggle to imagine you'd reach 50. So the secret is you only really need to focus on core services, handful, to learn the basics of AWS and get hired. And everything else after that that you learn is a bonus. And a recent study actually found that 80% of AWS job descriptions only focus on five to six services. And that's things like EC2, S3, VPC, RDS, and IAM. Now those core services have fundamental concepts that you need to know below them, so like load balancing, auto scaling, you know, subnetting, route tables, etc. But you need to figure out a way to learn these services efficiently in a way that actually sticks. But first, I want to talk about why most people fail. And the reason those people fail is because they don't do it the right way. And there is a three step approach that I recommend everyone to follow. You need to start with those core services I've just mentioned. So that's EC2, S3, VPS, RDS, and IAM. Learn what they do and why they matter because you will use them every day in your job. And then you need to learn the fundamentals below those services, load balancing, auto scaling, subnetting, permissions, these concepts are used across all cloud jobs, and if you're an on-prem engineer, you already should know this, but you're just learning it in a different way, tailored towards cloud computing. Then, the key step, which is really, really going to help you, is setting up an AWS free tier account. And what you want to do on that free tier account is build some small projects for free. Learning cloud does not need to be expensive. You could set up a website hosted on S3. You could set up a network deploy some EC2 instances, learn how to secure them, and write between different subnets. And that is the best way to learn. Learning by doing, instead of just watching someone else or watching tutorials, it's not gonna help you, you need to do. Now that you know what to focus on, let's talk about how you should structure your learning in the fastest way possible. Now the big mistake people make is they learn AWS in the wrong order. They jump straight into advanced services without understanding the fundamentals. And a lot of the content that's already out there that is provided on YouTube for AWS learning is for people really talented who are already in the industry. Now you want to think of AWS like learning to drive, right? You wouldn't start with a Formula One car before learning the basics. Now you can go from beginner to job ready fast, but we need to talk about why most people get stuck. And I was in this exact same situation where I set out a roadmap to learn cloud in 90 days. If you want to check out that video, I'll put a link in the description. And the thing with cloud, specifically at AWS, is that if you learn it out of order, everything feels confusing. You watch a tutorial on Lambda, but you don't even understand EC2. You try setting up a network, but you don't understand how VPCs work and why you need a net. Do you need an internet gateway? It's overwhelming and most people quit. And it's no different to learning to code. People try to get the fundamentals and they get overwhelmed. Now, if you ask me, this is the right order and the way I would learn AWS efficiently. 
Start with IAM permissions because security is everything in a client platform. If a bad person gets access to your client platform, <laughs> you can have a humongous bill. And then you want to learn computes, so that's EC2s, lambdas. This is how apps will run on the cloud. Now, what do applications need? They need to store data. Data has to live somewhere. So then you want to be able to storages and databases. So that could be anything from S3, RDS, DynamoDB. Now you've sort of set up your network, you've secured a lot of things, you've configured a map, you've pointed it to somewhere where data can be stored, but how does everything connect? That is where you get onto the networking aspect and go with VPCs. Now, networking on AWS, in my opinion, is easier than on-prem. As long as you understand how to create a network, you can create your own subnets with the side ranges, you know what a load balancer does, how a write table works, how to provide your network with internet connectivity and create your instances and that gateway so that they can remain private while still being accessible to the public internet, you'll be okay. I think I even summarized that on a, a one short form video. But learning how that actually works is important. So great, you've got your application set up, network done, secured, data stored. But what if you want that application to grow? What if you suddenly have a spurge of an extra 10,000 users? You can't just host it on one machine, right? So that's when you want to look into things like automation and scaling. And you can use an auto-scaling group, which is embedded within the EC2 service. If your application gets a lot of traffic, an auto-scaling group can spin up more machines to host those users. If you learn in this order, everything will click 10 times faster. Now let's talk about the bigger mistake that stops people from ever getting a job. Most people watch tutorials, but they never build anything. Most people take certifications and they still don't build anything. They just watch learning documentation. They think they are learning, but without hands-on practice, none of it sticks. Look, certifications are great. I have people in my comments all the time tell me they're like a golden ticket. Whereas I don't really believe that. I think certifications really are handy to people who have no experience and they prove their interests. They prove they want to learn. Once you're in the industry, Unless a company is paying for you to do it, or they offer you an incentive, like a bonus, not many people are actually doing certifications. You need to remember that certifications are a business element of cloud providers. They make money from you taking service. So if you ask me, companies do not care about certifications alone. They want proof that you can actually use AWS. If your resume has zero hands-on projects, you're going to lose out to someone who does. So here's what you need to do. Set up an AWS free tier account, but make sure you secure it and make sure you set up some billing alerts because if you don't do that and you make a mistake, it could be costly. And then deploy real world projects. The one I always recommend people is building a three tier architecture because that way you focus on every element of a working web application. And if you're on a learning journey and you're in a position where you want people to get out to notice you, Document it, share it on GitHub, share it on LinkedIn, let recruiters notice. If you follow this strategy, I can guarantee you, you're going to be 90% ahead of anyone else who isn't taking action like you are. Now, if you've listened to everything I've said throughout this video, you know exactly what AWS services to focus on and stop wasting time. You'll understand what ones matter, the right order to learn them, and how to get hands on with these services, because that's the best way to learn. But there's one last thing. AWS isn't enough. You need to know how to land the job, craft your resume, and ace the interview. You need to know how to build AWS services without the console and with programming languages like Terraform or CloudFormation. You need to know how to automate the delivery of those in CI/CD pipelines. So remember, learning AWS services is not the end. There's a lot more that comes within the tech stack of a cloud engineer than just pushing buttons in a client console. And I cover all of these extra topics on my YouTube channel. And you can't just take my word of advice. So hop into the link in my description and join my Discord. We have hundreds of people in there now building up a great community of engineers helping each other. There's a mix of seniors, juniors, people with no experience, and everyone helps each other out and has engaged in conversations every day. So just remember that every day you wait is another day that someone else is landing the job that you want. So it's time to get to work.